It's time to dish on a Victory Tuesday with the Prince, David Levitch. Hopefully many victories await this weekend. It's the final big stakes weekend of the year in New York. We'll be shifting a lot of focus post-Christmas to the championship meets at Gulfstream, Santa Anita, maybe some Oaklawn and Fairgrounds. But in the meantime, center stage at Aqueduct. And this is a big weekend. And I actually like that they moved it off Thanksgiving, David. Yeah, I agree with you. Last year, we saw this weekend produce some really good horses, including Nestor when the Demoiselle. You got Julia Shining this year coming up in the Demoiselle with all that pedigree she has. The Scar Mile looks interesting with um, Zandon and the Pletcher horse who's escaping my mind. Mind control, so it looks like right, a good yeah. matchup in the Cigar Mile. No turf racing, unfortunately, as they ran on the turf <laughs> for about 70 straight days in Bach and Aqueduct. So. <laughs> Turf racing's done in New York, but it's a good weekend. You also have Del Mar with the Hollywood Derby and a couple of turf stakes over there as well. So it looks like a good one to combo to end the year stakes wise, I guess, until Goldstream and Santa Anita a couple of days after Christmas. Yeah, I think uh, I guess we'll have uh, does Los Al still run their races at uh, the middle of the month, the Grade Ones? Yeah, I, yeah, now. I think they do. I don't want. I don't. I don't watch much Los Al though, to be honest with you. So I can't. I don't have the answer for that. But I do think. Yeah. What's it? The um, the is it the Scarlet, Starlet and Futurity. Yeah, Starlet. Well, let, yeah. let's stick to the two year olds who are running, which is this weekend. I am a big Remsen basher through the years, but it finally had its horse. Unfortunately, retired after the Belmont. But and we'll get to Nest in a moment. But Mo Donegal. Definitely, and I forget if he actually even won the Remsen last year, but I know he was in it. He came back in a big way. He, won. he probably could have been champion three year old if they if he had stayed healthy and they fi- found another race for him post Belmont. Uh, m- maybe the Remsen's back. Yeah, the Remsen last year was really good. It had Zandon as well, who ended up winning the Bluegrass, so it was a one two finish with Grade One winners. I agree with you on Mo Donigo. I mean, he won the Belmont, so. I don't know if he would have beat Epicenter in the Travers that day, but he could have easily won the Penn Derby and some other races to where he could have been 3-0 champion because he also won the Wood Memorial as well. Right. So he had two big stakes wins to start the – well, halfway through the year before he unfortunately got hurt. But it looked like he was rounded in the career form right after the Belmont and unfortunately got hurt. But the Remsen looks back. Looks back. I'm going to keep an open mind about it. I've, I've given it some lumps through the years. It doesn't but- look good this year. No, okay. Well, one that could look good based on how she does, you mentioned it, the Demoiselle. I believe Malathat ran in that uh, two years ago as well. So this is definitely a tried-and-true Pletcher path, and uh, why not? Because when you get to uh, one Oaks winner and then uh, a presumptive champion three-year-old coming out of there as two-year-olds, I'd stick with it too. Yeah, it looks like the Demoiselle needs to be a grade one soon, the pace it's on. But it's produced a um, couple, yeah, like you said, two champion three-year-olds in a row with Malathot and Nest. And then Malathot this year is obviously probably going to be the older female champion. So it looks like the Demoiselle's turning into a nice road to the Kentucky Oaks. It's also a mile and an eighth, which is good. I like those two-turn races in the two-year-old season this time of year. So it looks like it's going to be another good prep. I think Julia Shining's in there, obviously. I don't really – I think there's one. I didn't look at the probables in a while, but there was one other filly that was really good – or that's – had a good maiden one that's going to be in there, but it looks like a good field. All right, and that uh, probably will wrap us up, uh, at least the stakes action at Aqueduct. You'll be covering it the rest of the month. Hopefully some carryovers to spice things up as uh, we trudge along to Gulfstream. Turf course, back in business down there. Turf Way opens this week. Uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the action shifting in Kentucky, but I've gotten the sense that Turf Way, not your bag. Turfway is not my thing. It's fun to bet Turfway spontaneously and during the week, maybe one, you know, Wednesday or Saturday night, but it's not something I'm going to sit there and handicap all the time. But it can be fun sometimes. It's also got wild results. So if you're a person that likes wild results, that is your track to bet. Very well, random. I will point out for those listening Steve Asmussen in December at Turfway, so the early part of the meet, November, December, one for 35 the last five years. Uh, So definitely an afterthought for him in terms of what horses end up there. Presque Isle Shippers, which uh, seem to have done well at Keeneland. There was a string they did well there. And some may think, well, it's Tapita, Turfway's Tapita. Does not translate well. Presque Isle Shippers are awful at Turfway. So keep that in mind. And another track where the Shippers are really bad 
is Gulfstream. So for whatever reason, they come from South Florida and end up at Turfway. Uh, they win less than 5%, and the ROI is like negative 80% or something like that. So they don't win. They don't pay when they do. Fade the Gulfstream strippers to start the Turfway meet. Well, too, with the um, purses being so high at Turfway now, you got guys like Maker and Brad Cox and Wesley Ward, who always, I feel like Ward, I feel like Ward only runs at Keeneland, a couple wins at Saratoga, back to Keeneland, then Turfway. He only runs like in Ascot. He runs at like four tracks the whole year, but Turfway is definitely a place you got to watch out for with Brad Cox, Maker, and um, Wesley Ward for sure. They have good percentages there. I think Maker usually, I, I don't know if it's for sure, but I feel like Maker usually is top to standings to win the meet. You have good riders as well. I saw Ricardo's riding. Landeros will be there because he has a new agent, Cox's son. You'll have yeah. Talamo, I'm sure. So you'll, you'll have some good riders there as well, and I'm sure a lot of people. It's going to be interesting to see without a fairgrounds turf course what the Kentucky people do with their turf horses if they leave them back for turfway to see if they like it or – I guess go to Gulfstream looks like their only option, to be honest. It looks like one of those two options, so you could see some good horses at Turfway. Well, don't sleep on that Sam Houston turf course. No. Yeah, I don't know. Last me, Sam. Well, he'll have he'll, yep. a lot of horses. At right. 12% takeout. We'll see if they uh, actually simulcast, though, depending on what Heise is up to. Uh, and I did mention at the top, it's Victory Tuesday for you. Congratulations on starting the year with the dub. Thanks. It was fun. We had a buzzer beater to win the game against a really good team on the road. It was it was a fun start. We made it a little too interesting, but it was <laughs> where's fun. the most hostile environment in uh, the area? Um, I mean, our rivalry games are pretty big because so many people go the South and the OC games. Those are pretty big. I mean, right. I Hostile, though, I have to think about it. There's certain places that, like, Manuel had no students last night. There was no students at the game. So it just depends on what night it is or who shows up. But I would probably say our rivalry games are by far the biggest crowds and most hostile because all the kids know everything about everybody. So it's a little more, you know, there's more, bla there's more bad blood. Put, put a little mustard on those jeers. Yeah, there's a little, it's a little more ugly thing. Speaking of mustard, what's the best concession food at? North Oldham games. Popcorn. Popcorn. We have popcorn. we got a yeah, we have a lead popcorn. All right. It's gonna be good for my that. kids. You know what I like putting on popcorn is the uh hot chicken seasoning. Well, I've never done that before because I don't really I, I don't eat popcorn all the time, but our popcorn is good. But I, I you know, I'll maybe I'll suggest it. I'll put some hot chicken seasoning on the menu with the popcorn for you. And we can call it the Ed DeRosa special and see if anybody buy, buys it. Love it. You know HRN yeah. is a proud uh advertiser in the program they are and those come out friday night if you're going to be in attendance they're going to be hot mm -hmm. off the printer friday night all right hrn and model t supporting the program yes and travis of course had to keep his ad from last year making fun of me but it's okay it's all it's all good and fun it's part of part of the fun for sure all right well hopefully uh cash and tickets will be part of the fun this weekend aqueduct and uh no more. yeah Heading in, and then Del Mar heading into 2023 uh, annual subscriptions. Uh, sold a few of those last year when you came on board. So hopefully some others will do that. Uh, buy now, save all year, as I say. And hopefully we'll have some winners to discuss next week. Yeah, and then we'll have the Gulfstream meet package, which starts for the championship meet a couple days after Christmas, all the way up until Florida Derby Day. Which is what, probably March we get April. Yeah, yeah like whatever that Saturday, there. whatever that Saturday or Sunday is at the end of March or first Saturday in April. The best, that's the best prep for the Derby. Seems like Florida always has the good horses. Last yeah, year they weren't good though. Last nah, year they weren't good. Well, some people like White Abaria. <laughs> if White, but he's also running in the Cigar Miles. He so is in the Cigar. That's right. Yeah, and he only he only runs well at Gulfstream, and if he doesn't run well, his owner just blames the jockey. So we'll see what happens at Aqueduct <laughs> this weekend on a different track. But he's Winter been a Gulfstream mile. horse. Now, can Zandon yeah. be champion if he wins? I don't know. That that's actually I, I don't know. This you got Taba two grade one two grade one. You'll have Cyberknife. You will say Zandon wins. He'd have two, and then you have Epicenter with. One, but he also had a very good three-year-old year running in all the triple crack. I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. But I don't know. It's. I'm sure he gets some votes. But if I guess if he, he won the, 
but the bluegrass wasn't very good. I mean, he beat Emmanuel and um, the McPeak horse who never really turned out to be much. Um, right. Can't remember the horse. Smile Happy, I think it was. Well, who, what about Rattlesnake? Was he in the Lexington? Yeah, he, he did. No, he Bridge. didn't. It was, oh, that's someone else. Who am I thinking of? No, Maybe Rattlesnake Bridge was too, a right? good Kieran horse. About, it, um, it was Rattle and Roll, but he was a four-year-old. Rattle and Roll, that's no, it. No, he was a three-year-old. Yeah. Mm. No, it was Smile Happy. So, yeah. I don't yeah. Think I, I'm, I, I don't think anything could happen where I'd switch off modern games. No, my, I always I always forget about modern games, too. Do you not care that it's a turf horse, though? I guess it doesn't really matter. I, feel I just like feel like American he, racing. You win the two races he did. Like, that's – I do lean toward dirt. And if we were talking about, multi, like, a triple crown race winner that had a great year, that – I would I would definitely choose that over a turf horse anytime. But I mean there's just no if I had a vote, I would vote for Taba. His Santa Anita was win was big time off a of maiden win. He won he beat I know he lost the cyber knife in the Haskell, but then he beat him convincingly in the Penn Derby and he ran the best race of any three year old in the classic. I know I don't know, we'll see. I think I would probably lean towards him, but it would be him in modern games in my yeah. opinion. Maybe maybe um Maybe epicenter, but it's a what have, what have you done lately for me sport. So we'll see how people treat epicenter. Other than epicenter, who's hurt, it sounds like they're all coming back as four year olds, though. So it does, which we need because every good horse in the country retired that was older. So we need all those horses to come back and hopefully can spice up the. I don't know who's going to run the Pegasus. Oh, if you got a fifty claimer that's got some good figures, you might as well try the Pegasus because I don't even know who's running in that Heck race. Yeah, Zandon. Yeah. He can well, maybe he can't go that far, but I guess if no one's in the race, he can make it. Well, he can go nine. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he flattens out a little, but yeah, he, he yeah. did win. He didn't win the uh, bluegrass, but it yeah. wasn't the best field as as we no, said. He, charge that's it. His, if that's charge his it, limit. Comes back. Yeah, charge it. He was a. I mean, he won the Dwyer by seven hundred and forty-two lengths. But heck, why can't Ness step front in the Pegasus? I don't think I don't know if they're wait. I think I saw that he's waiting. He's going to do the same thing he did with Mal. I thought that like the double dog dare oh, into the yeah. uh, into the Ogden Phipps into all the races at Saratoga. I, I agree with you that. though. Three mil. Yeah, I saw that. So, all right. Well, good luck this week, uh, both on the court and on the track, and uh, we'll dish next week. Thank you. Sounds good.